said to control half the wealth of the world. As Rothschild biographer Derek Wilson explains, Rothschild critics have justification for their anxiety. The House of Rothschild is immensely more powerful than any financial empire that has ever preceded it, and it's able to control governments behind the scenes, secretly. Economic power, political power, go hand in hand, and it's like Mayor Rothschild of the uh, Rothschild banking family in Germany said, give me control of the nation's monetary system, and I care not who writes their laws. Nathan Rothschild in 1820 might have more right to say that than any of his successors. In this statement is more or less absurd. The Federal Reserve does not control the money supply. The Federal Reserve influences the money supply. To say that the Federal Reserve only influences the money supply is like saying a robber with a gun to your head is only influencing you to give him uh, his money. And, uh, and of course, if you give him your money, you may be spared your life, but here again, you don't have your money anymore. There has been, in the last 30 or 40 years, a much greater international flavor to the activities of the Fed because the banking system has become global. And you could no longer regulate the U.S. money supply by simply uh, via the, the domestic Federal Reserve banks. The Federal Reserve controls the very heart of what's happening with money because money enters everything. It's the one thing that everybody wants. And when you give a private institution a monopoly on the creation of this money, you vest total control in that institution. If you have the money, uh, you can get any law passed you want. So who do you care whether uh, Bill Clinton is president or uh, uh, who is senator from New Jersey? It doesn't make any difference because you write a check and you get another senator. One of the stickiest questions in this debate is this. Just who owns the Federal Reserve? The City of London set the whole thing up. The Federal Reserve Bank of New York is principally owned by five merchant banks in London chartered by the Bank of England. Perhaps England, which many have considered a political satellite of the United States in recent years, is really the one pulling the strings of international policy. It's not a matter of who owns the Fed, it's who controls it. The government has given the banks a monopoly, and then you see the Justice Department doing nothing about the bank mergers. A monopoly can only exist with government assistance, and they've given great assistance to the banking monopoly. Perhaps the headiest allegation made against those who run the Federal Reserve is that they are responsible for three of the biggest tragedies of the 20th century, World War I, World War II, and the Great Depression. Wars are very profitable. In fact, wars are probably the most profitable thing uh, an international banker can be involved in. So consequently, throughout the last at least 300 years of North American and European history, you see incidents of uh, international bankers backing both sides of a conflict. They've been trying to have a war in Europe since 1885, but the central banks of Europe had already bankrupted all the nations of Europe. They had no money. The only money was here in the United States. In order to get that money, they had to put a central bank over on the American people. It was sold as a way to bring stability to the American economy. Well, uh, what happens uh, just a little over a decade after the passage of the Fed? We see the biggest depression uh, of this uh, century in any case. For the 16 months prior to the crash of 29, the Federal Reserve increased the money supply by 62%. Now, what was happening back then? Much like it's happening today. People were buying and selling, pledging and borrowing, thinking the good times would never end. And then at the time of the crash, they pulled the plug on the money supply, and the people who had pledged their stocks, their bonds, their homes, their cars, everything, they pledged their savings accounts, they lost it all. Selling guns to one adversary while making loans to another is a common way these boys make their profits during war. And when profits begin sagging, people like Jacob Schiff, Max Warburg, and J.P. Morgan knew how to build them up again. Surprise, surprise, it's a documented fact that these fellows financed Trotsky and Lenin with billions in gold and credit to initiate the revolution in Russia. With Russia out of the war and America in, the conflict was extended by at least another two years. Two more glorious years of gun sales and wartime bank loans upon which to earn interest for many more years to come. 
there is no question that war is a profit-making business. Uh, after World War I, uh, Senator Gerald Nye held very famous hearings here in Washington where he dragged in some of the biggest bankers and industrialists and uh, put them on the spot and just examined profits that were made by some of these major interests. War is a profit-making business. Anybody who uh, says otherwise is a liar or a fool. They were able to manipulate us into World War I, and as a matter of fact, the war stretched out for at least another two years beyond uh, what it would have gone. Just when you think you're ahead of the game, someone changes the rules. They did this knowing, uh, with malice of forethought, to strengthen their own profits and to build their own institutions, their own banking uh, institutions. Many people believe that uh, virtually all of the wars of this century have been caused for uh, reasons that benefit small financial groups, those that uh, move in the sphere of influence of the Bilderberg and Trilateral Commission. For an example, the, uh, the war in the Balkans right now, who's been providing uh, Milosevic with arms and weapons the Soviets have who has been financing uh, the Soviet Union, their uh, military-industrial uh, complex, the United States has, European bankers have. So the bankers have been financing both sides of every major conflict. Conflict brings progress, but control conflict brings control progress. Every major war, every major conflict, arms sales, uh, loaning money to governments, uh, you get their people to pay you interest back into the uh, to the coffers of the bank, money that you created out of nothing. Nobel Prize Milton Friedman claimed that the Federal Reserve caused the Great Depression by deliberately reducing the amount of money in circulation. Depositors all over the country were frightened about the safety of their funds and rushed to withdraw them. There were runs, there were failures of banks by the droves, and all the time the Federal Reserve System stood idly by when it had the power and the duty and the responsibility to provide the cash that would have enabled the banks to meet the insistent demands of their depositors without closing their doors. Congressman Lewis McFadden, chairman of the House. And then they want you to respect them. Respect our religions. Religion is not to be respected. You uncover the truth. You say the truth. No matter what.